it, is there one technique that you wish you could have kept secret that you wish you could still have as a secret? Well, obviously, drop shotting was the one that, that when I first came out here, they were not drop shotting. I mean, right. I won my first Bassmaster tournament drop shotting on Toledo Bend. Obviously, that would have been the best. But I mean, now, I mean, the guys up north, up here, I mean, they. They keep that. They, they probably drop shot more than the guys out west. Yeah. I mean, we don't drop shot out west anymore because it seems like that cycle's gone through. Right. So yeah, I mean, it, that would be the one I've always said. I was about um, the second or third guy that really saw it and yeah. saw how effective it was. Aaron was definitely the guy leading the charge. But uh, man, I he always wonder if he could have just kept that a secret a little longer. <laughs> it would have been pretty cool. Dude, it was crazy because I, I want to bring this story up real quick. When I first saw it, and this is going to sound ridiculous because it was later than when you guys were doing it, but it was the classic that Woo Dave's won in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And the wind blew like crazy and I ended up having a fish in a lake called Lake Calumet. And dude, we had all our little deals I at the time. That. The tube and a slider style worm, little shaky head worm. And Dude, I thought they were the ultimate finesse baits, and I could go anywhere in the country and catch them with that. And Aaron Martins and Mark and Risk, Mark Risk yep. absolutely, dude, destroyed. I mean, there was about 10 guys fishing in Lake Calumet, and they just outproduced everybody. And that was the first time I'm like, dude, that's there's something to that. My first I, time I saw Kota Kiriyama out on Lake Oroville in 110 feet. Of water. I'm in 95, <laughs> Carolina rigging. And I'm getting one every. I'm in the top ten, but he's catching a bass every cast for like three hours. <laughs> wow! Uh, what is happening here? I had wow. no clue what he was doing. And he, they called it down shot back then. Yeah. But I mean, I was like, I got to learn that technique. And Aaron, Aaron, you know, was right there. And so I just, Brett Height actually drew Aaron Martins in a tournament in New Mexico, and. I was buddies with Brett then. He, I go, dude, show me everything. And that's that's where it all started for me and Brett. Uh, yeah. It's from Aaron Martin's drawing him. Yeah. I, I remember that classic because I, we were all becoming aware of the drop shot, but we were so resistant to it. Mm -hmm. It's like we got this shaky head. We got these finesse baits. Why do we need this tool? It's just yeah. more confusion. Yeah, for what? And then I remember asking you that question. I'm like, Does, did, did it really make a difference? And, and you said, you said, it's unbelievable. Because yeah. you switched over to it in live, like for the first time, and started catching Dude, them. It's it was the real deal. Yeah, and that was eye opener for me. But I, I that thing still pisses me off. <laughs> I hate drop shot. Still I, mad at it. I am so mad at it. Like I can't get the weight from tangling all the other rods, and it, every time you catch a fish, it falls off, and you got to retie the stupid thing. God, I hate fishing that drop shot. Bry, Bry, <laughs> would you have the anger management guy on speed dial back there? We need him for Pete. Uh, speaking of like techniques, but baits and reviving them, wiggle wart, old wiggle wart. Mm. Mike, where, where you grew up, that was a staple. And um, the old ones are special. It's just so hard to get them. They're on eBay. They're 50, 60 bucks. And you took that bait and you revived it by creating one. Talk a little bit about that. You know, that's essentially what always killed me about every company that ever tried to revive or duplicate the Wiggle Wart. That's what they tried to do was duplicate it. Right. And growing up on Table Rock, I mean, I started throwing a Wiggle Wart when I was six, seven years old. Honest to God. I mean, that was one of the first baits I can remember catching fish consistently on. And having all those years of experience throwing the bait it was a phenomenal bait don't get me wrong it'll still catch him today but there were always things about the bait that i didn't specifically like i wanted it to go deeper i wanted it to wiggle a little different and and basically having the opportunity to work with spro bait company and develop the bait the way i wanted it, it it's unbelievable the thing that's crazy is as you develop baits and you've been through this pete's been through this john's been through this generally when you get a bait right in the prototype state you always feel like there's going to be a letdown when that bait goes to production something happened from the prototype state to production and the bait got better i mean it was great wow. before it went into production That's but after it came out of production it was even better what was that what do you think it was you know i just think it was just simply the fact that uh i had the bait close but when it went into that final mold and the mold was made everything was just perfect in that mold the, the little cup in the bill where the where the line tie is and the bill angle and the little dip in the bill and it all just came together the bait died a foot and a half two feet deeper than we thought it would i mean it's a wow. 13 and a half 14 foot bait where the wow. old wiggle wart was a you know a eight shallower. to ten foot bait. Yeah. so there's a lot of benefits to the rock crawler and it's just been man it's been the the biggest thing that i've ever hung my hat on i mean yeah. it's really awesome to be involved in a project a cool like bait. that 
It's a really, really cool That's game. That's a great one. I want to jump back, and I was kind of teasing you and said meter, uh, <laughs> but talking about electronics. And, you know, I've now I've got real veterans of the sport here. <laughs> I want to get your opinion on electronics. And, and I want to hear from both of you. John, I want to start with you. Has... Has the technologies that are out now, has that, how do you feel about that, right? It's like, you know, dude, Navionics chip, <laughs> GPS, dude, everybody sees the stuff now that, and I remember that we worked so hard to find. Dude, my paper maps would be laying on the floor, and I'd be out there guesstimating where I was at, mm-hmm. and you're zigzagging and zigzagging, and you had to get so good with a flash or a 2D mm-hmm. to find that little stuff, and you didn't really know what it was, but it... You know what I mean? And then you had to triangulate. I mean, all these technologies, structure scan and 360. And has that helped the sport? Has that helped you? Or is that, has that hurt? No, that totally has killed me. I, I, I'm like you. I'm old school. You know, I think I was at Oneida, as you were a couple of weeks ago. And, and they have the individual little mounds on some of these chips now. My Garmin has the individual little mounds out there. And I'm like, are you kidding me? They, I mean, these are the little spots you used to catch one. They're on the map. The I mean, juice, there's the there's needles in the haystack. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know where you find the secrets anymore. I mean, maybe the last thing is the tidal rivers that are going to change. Yeah. But, man, you get these these Kentucky lakes and all these places. There are no more secrets. Uh, there's crazy. either going to be man-made stuff, people putting stuff in, uh, but the old school stump rows and all that, that's all found. So, yeah, yeah it, it disappointing to me. Yeah. Because like you, I mean, I you, you had to find it two you days had, in a row. You had to. You yeah. had to work for now it. Now you got a waypoint. You're you're good yeah. for the rest of your life. You can find that spot. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sort of on your school. I would love to see it go back, but I don't know how far I'd do that. Right. Does it, it make you a better angler that you learned how to do it before the technology came out? <laughs> it, it definitely does, in my opinion, because you you understand those little spot on a spots even better. I think when you had to do it the old school way. Yeah. And, and just like you guys, I mean, it was triangulating. It was lining up with this flagpole and that chimney and whatever you had to do to get you back in the spot. Oh, you found that spot too? Uh, absolutely, oh, yeah. I found that spot. <laughs> so, but no, I mean, I think it definitely makes you a better angler because even with GPS, I mean, even as good as our garments are today, you've always got that little distant error in it you know just yeah. being able to line up to make the perfect throw and i think some of us from the old days that do still triangulate i mean i find myself doing it all the time mm-hmm. yeah. when i find that sweet spot i'm still looking for right. marks yeah. and when you find that right angle i think learning it the old school way does make a difference yeah and, and you know it's interesting uh on bass university hackney gives a, a seminar on using his garments and uh how he feels that shallow water angling is now much less pressured 100 percent less pressured. because because everybody can find the shoals they can find the ledges they can and they know how to do it so they're all out there nobody's on the bank <laughs> wow special guest this pop is headed. we're gonna see we're gonna talk another later. special guest <laughs> wow unbelievable yeah and, and look at uh, to, to your point look at this year this year has been dominated by shallow water guys for the most part, especially in the elite trail. Absolutely. You know, look at Lake Wheeler going on right now. Shallow. Dude, yeah. shallow guys mm-hmm. are, are catching them. Yeah. It's true. That's interesting. It's very true. Uh, John, I'll pick on you for a second. Talk to me about the move. You've, you're, you're a West Coast guy your whole <laughs> life uh, and recently made a move, Tennessee. Right. Yeah, and, it, and I think it really came down to driving. 30. Yeah. 32 years now, I've driven across this country. I mean, I know every road. I know every stop. <laughs> you know, I've, I, I, Skeet always tells me I've driven the most miles of probably anybody because I've done it longer and traveled farther. And it just got tiring. I got yeah. a seven-year-old. I wanted to spend yeah. some time at home. Yeah. So, yeah, we picked a spot that's neutral, uh, middle of Tennessee. I wanted to live on a lake. I live on Watts Bar. It's TVA Lake. TVA Lake's been killing me in the last few years, so I want to learn how to fish them better. Yeah. So, yeah, it was an all-around thing. I love it there. I mean, it's an outdoor lifestyle. Arizona's great. I, you know, I, I born and raised there, but I was just – you had to drive an hour to go fishing. Yeah. I got I got five minutes. I got two minutes down to my dock. I'm fishing. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a lifestyle change is what it was all about. I want to applaud you for that, for being an elite angler 
and moving somewhere other than Gunnersville. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got heat. Gunnersville, right? <laughs> I got heat about wow. that. I got heat from uh, B- Duckett and everybody else. Why didn't you? I got, I, I got <laughs> well, my Duckett, own lake. Duckett wanted your money. He yeah, I would have bought on Duckett Island. <laughs> exactly. Right. Bought Duckett boat from Duckett Marine. <laughs> yeah. and then, uh, you know, I'd have been perfect. Duckett had boats everywhere. I'd have been set. Can't get away from this guy. He owns everything. That's <laughs> hey, amazing. That's amazing. Well done. Uh, is there so- What are you going to miss? the most about arizona well arizona is the weather in the winter i mean i can you know it's beautiful there i mean it's 75 and sunny all winter long i can catch fish on new year's day fish tournaments every day there that'll be a little tough but other than that nothing i mean i love yeah. it it's a you know 50 years there that's that's enough I'm yeah change of pace yeah change of pace that's great let me remind everybody watching we want to hear from you if you've got questions for mike or john hit us up on the i am right there next to your screen or on the ike live social pages at Ike Live Show, Pete. You know that? I do At now. Ike Live Show. Uh, also, a reminder for everybody watching, once again, Ike Foundation tournament and event tomorrow uh, from 11 to 2. Bring the family, bring the kids. We have kids casting, kids fishing, lots of games. And then starting at 4 o'clock, we have a celebrity dinner and silent auction. Tickets still available? They are? They are. They are. And available they at, at the door. Available at the door or... You can get them at ikefoundation.org. Uh, dinner tickets. Uh, here it goes. A couple more tough questions for you guys. I'm not letting you off the hook this season. Uh, we, uh, and th- this is one that's actually been asked several times, and I think this might be the last time we're going to ask it. Uh, but really hot topic right now. Want to get to the last event in Buffalo. And uh, w- we saw a really strange tournament there in that bracket-style event. And we saw Prosnick lay his rod down to let Kobe Krieger advance. I, I want to get your guys' take on it, because it's just interesting, because with so many different opinions we've heard in this room tonight, <laughs> and I would love to hear your guys' opinion. John, we heard been, the, we heard the rookies competing. talk about it. Yeah, you've been competing forever. Um, yeah. I, have, I have absolutely no problem with it. Jacob said from the first minute he drew him, he goes, that's what I'm going to do. It was yeah. never a secret. It was never trying to hide it. He wasn't going out there faking like he could. It was losing fish or something. Right. Just said it straight up. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, they should have shuffled the deck and gave him someone else if they didn't want that. I mean, I understand right. that. Yep. But, yeah, he never made his – I have no problem with the whole deal. Yeah. Mike, what's your opinion? You know, I don't know all the fine details of it, but, I mean, I think that goes to show what the com- camaraderie is like out here on on this level of competition. I mean, even though you're competing for a dollar amount, a, a spot to the classic, I mean, Wheeler – or, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Jacob was pretty much locked into the classic. Right. And then you have – the fact that the only way he is going to get there is by letting him catch him. Yeah. I think it's a great show of camaraderie and what we do to try to help our fellow competitors out out here. Yeah. Does it? Does it? Is it weird that there's been so much negative? Do you find that strange that so many people have beat up on him for doing that? I really do. Just for the simple fact that you know, I mean, everybody's all about. Uh, you know what's going on in this country i mean there's a lot of crazy stuff going on and i'm not going to go into details but i mean when you look at all the crazy stuff happening in this country today and then you see an act of kindness an act of camaraderie whatever you want to call it uh, it blows my mind that people have had the attitude that they've had about it i mean it it pretty much tears me up you know my understanding was that jacob had some family stuff that he needed to get back home to anyway and that just added to it you know just let the guy off the hook and and let it go yeah yeah it's a good answer the veterans have spoken they did it's interesting we've heard some varied comments and uh here's how we're gonna end it big exclamation point a lot of guys watching might have some of your competitors watching tonight but we've got a lot of people watching that fish to delaware and they want to know how you guys are going to do it tomorrow, okay? We're going to go around the room. You too, Pete. You're not yeah, out of Pete, this You're way, not man. out of the woods. You're not out of the I woods, I got to keep bro. secrets. All right. John, we're going to start with you. Give me your number one top bait that you're going to throw tomorrow on the Tidal Delaware River. Mine will be a chatterbait. Chatterbait. Yep, I'll throw a chatterbait. It's the only way I've caught a fish on that place. Chatterbait, uh, moving water, hopefully falling water. Um, yeah, just uh, throw that all day. I'm going to be height fish it. 
Be height style. I like it. Mike, one bait. You know, one. Choice. if it's got to be one bait, it's going to be a War Eagle buzz bait. I mean, I caught very few fish here the last time I was here, but when it comes to the tidal, tidal river system, a buzz bait's hard to beat, and it's going to be a War Eagle 3 8 ounce buzz bait. Yeah, I, and, we, and we saw Jason Christie with a high finish on I, the buzz bait. I, I hear they're eating a big swim bait out there, guys. Give it a shot. Sure. <laughs> There's your competition right there. Now listen to him. He's throwing you off. Nah, that's a tip. All right, Pete, we're putting you on the spot. Hot one tip. bait. Title Delaware mm-hmm. River tomorrow? If I had to pick one bait, I'd probably pick a DT6. DT6. And old school. Old school color. And yeah. uh, just mainly because I just catch the bigger fish on that. Okay. And if, if I had to just pick one, I'd get my co-anglers throwing the real deal. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay, now, do you want to, real quick while people are watching, do you want to give a GPS coordinate out? <laughs> to your best buddy? I would, but I, I, all my GPS has failed in the boat. <laughs> I'm glad we're fishing the river tomorrow. Likely <laughs> answer. Yeah, you're definitely not making an electronic sponsor plug tonight, are you? Uh, hey, yes. Oh, come in! Run in! Come on, Marizo! (laughs) Come in! Good to see you, buddy. Marizo? What are you leaving for, Marizo? I have a jet lag. Jet lag! uh, Look at that camera right there. Wave to everybody. Say hi to everybody. <laughs> okay. Good luck tomorrow, Thank Marizo. You, you Thank okay. you very much. We'll, we'll see you we'll in the morning. We'll see you on the river. <laughs> That's awesome. That was nice. Marizo. Nice appearance from Marizo. Yeah. Dude, I wonder I, if he's going to fish his point. He probably... Well, here's the funny thing. And I told him... And, dude, he bust... He, he laughed. He laughs a lot. Oh, yeah. But when I told him this story, he laughed for, like, 20 straight minutes. <laughs> um, so, I, I came. I'm like, dude, do you know what you did? He's like, what do you mean? What do you mean? I said, well, you know, like after you fish that area, you know, people watch it and you were followed and you changed the name of that spot. And, you know, he's kind of trying to understand what I'm saying. He's, you know, he's kind of turning his head looking. He's like, oh, what, what? You know, I'm like, that spot you fished, it's known as Marizu Rock now. <laughs> oh! He was so happy to hear that he has a name. Pete, yeah. you don't even have a name on that I, river. I don't. You've been fishing it for 50 years. You don't have a name on that Are river. Are we going to name? He like, said after tomorrow he will. Yeah. Oh, after tomorrow. Are we going to name the bars up the Rancocas that Shaw and Skeet got stuck <laughs> on, too? <laughs> we probably Skeet should. Bar. Skeet's, Skeet's Reef. Reef. I like yeah. it. Skeet's <laughs> Reef. <laughs> I already asked him about that spot. He said, I, I, you don't want to go that far. <laughs> Skeet's Reef. I like that. That's funny. Yeah, that's good uh, stuff. Brian Carpenter, you got you got a break for me for a pee and beer? I got a break. Okay. Oh, and we're coming back with uh, Kevin Van Dam, Dave Mercer, and Brian Bickle. Wow. Nice. We're coming back. Wow. Sh- we're str- coming back strong. Strong. Uh, hang in there with us. Uh, John Murray, Mike McClellan, Ike Live. We'll be right back. Thank you, guys.